My name is Steve Maruzzi. I'm a Territory Service Manager for Lars Heating Systems. We're here to talk about cascading neotherm boilers together. When we cascade, we can cascade up to eight neotherm boilers. One becomes the lead boiler, or otherwise known as the master control, and the others become the lag boiler or slave controls. Um, when you do cascading, you have a system sensor and an outdoor sensor. Those are provided for you, uh, so you will need to wire those into the control system and then we'll be able to go in and program each boiler. So we're going to start off with the master control. Uh, we're going to show you how to program the master control, and then from there we'll get into programming the lag boilers or slave controls. So the very first thing we're going to talk about is setting up the lead lag set point. And again, we have a system sensor installed out in the system, and by setting up the lead lag set point, now we'll be able to monitor the system sensor. So to do so, uh, what we have here is we have uh, up and down arrows, left and right arrows. At the very top, we have a back button, an information button, and a home button. We also have a large OK button on the center of the screen. So what we're going to do here is press the information button. When we do this, we have a submenu that appears. Um, so we have quick start, test, diagnostics, login, advanced setup, and display setup. So we'll start... The advanced setup is already highlighted for us here. Uh, if not, just use your up and down arrows or left and right arrows to highlight it and press OK. From here, we're going to go in and highlight lead lag configuration, which is already highlighted for you. If CH configure was highlighted, just use your down arrow to highlight lead lag configuration. Press OK. And now we have some more options, lead lag master configure, uh, lead lag slave configure, and lead lag outdoor reset configure. Uh, so we're going to highlight the lead lag master configure, press OK, and here we can go down to our set point. So I'm going to highlight set point, click OK, and another screen appears. On this screen, what we have is a range from 60 degrees to 190 degrees. The boilers come defaulted for 120. All we have to do is simply use our up arrow, to change that, that uh, temperature. So here what we're going to do, we're going to use the example for of 180 degrees. So I'm just going to hold the up arrow, bring that to 180. When we highlight, when we get 180 on the screen, we now press the large OK button, and that temperature now will change to 180. Okay. Next, what we're going to do is go in and set up the outdoor reset to get to the outdoor reset, we can hit the back button and go into lead lag outdoor reset. So we're going to go down and highlight lead lag outdoor reset, press OK, reset functions. So it should be enabled. If it's disabled, highlight it, press OK, and choose enable. Press OK again, and you'll now see it change. So this is the screen you're going to go in and set your high outdoor or your max outdoor temp your minimum outdoor temp, uh, low water temp, et cetera. So um, this is the screen you'd go in, and if you want to change something, just highlight it, and then use your up and down arrows to make that change. Again, here's your range on the left-hand side of that little screen, so we can range from 40 to 140 for the temp setting. The very next thing we want to do is go into warm weather shutdown. So warm weather shutdown, we can either press the eye icon or the back button. But for this, for demonstration purposes, I'm going to go back and press the eye icon. Go back over, highlight advanced settings. Scroll up and choose CH configuration. Press OK. And now we can go in and you'll see warm weather shutdown. Uh, highlight it, press OK. And it's going to be defaulted for shutdown immediately. Leave it at shutdown immediately and scroll down to warm weather shutdown set point. Choose OK, and now we can adjust the warm weather shutdown. So if you don't need heat in the building at 65 degree of outdoor air temp, just scroll down, choose 65. It may be 60 degrees or it could be 70 degrees, whatever you would like. But for this example, I'll choose 65. I'll press OK, and you'll see that temperature change on the screen. So the next thing we want to do is we're going to go back to the advanced settings, and we need to enable the master control. To enable the master control, we choose advanced settings, highlight it, go down to lead lag configuration, 
highlight lead lag configuration, press OK. And here's our lead lag master control. Okay. This should be enabled. So I want you to go in, check it, see if it's enabled. All right. If it's not and it's disabled because someone was in adjusting the control, highlight uh, enable or highlight it and then choose the enable, press OK. And now we'll go back to the lead lag master config. I'm going to use the back button one more time. And here I'm going to go in and choose lead lag slave configuration. Now on each boiler that's being used for uh, cascading, you will need to change your uh, slave configuration to, uh, you'll have to enable that. They come defaulted. And what we want to do is go in and enable all the slave functions because the Modbus connections are done through the slave functions or the MB2 Modbus address. So back to the slave configuration. We're going to go down. Uh, it's disabled here, so we want to highlight it, press OK, and choose Enable via Sola Master, not via Modbus Master. But when we cascade, again, the boilers are communicating, so that's done through the, the Honeywell Solar Control. So we go down and highlight Enable via Solar Master. Press OK, and you'll see it uh, enabled now on via Solar Master. So the next thing we can do is we can go in and change the boiler name. On the home screen, it gives you an option for boiler name. This is not necessary to change the name of each boiler. Uh, because it will not, it, it will not functionality of the boiler itself, so uh, or the operation of the boilers. But if you care to change the name, what we're going to do is go in and uh, choose Advanced Settings, highlight Advanced Settings, press OK. We're going to go down to System Configuration, choose System ID and Access, and right at the top here, we're highlighted for boiler name. You can press OK, it's going to prompt you to log in. Click OK, and the login here is LNT, it stands for Lars Neotherm. Go up and highlight L, press OK. Go over, highlight N, press OK. Come up and highlight T, press OK. Now we have to remember, once we have our login, we have to scroll down and highlight the OK button on the display. Once we've highlighted the OK button, we now hit the OK, and we are now, lo now logged in. From here, we can change this. So it says Neotherm. I can go over and, and highlight Neotherm 1. Click OK. I must scroll down here and to the OK button on the display. All right. If I was on one of the lag boilers and it was boiler 2, I would highlight 2. Oops, I need to go back here. Backspace. And here now I can go up and highlight Boiler 2. Any name will do? Any name will do. That's correct. So now we go press the OK. We go back to the home screen. And now it will appear as Boiler if Neotherm 2. Okay. Again, it does not matter. We do not have to uh, change the boiler name to operate the boilers themselves. Now what we want to do is we want to get in and change the Modbus addresses. So the Modbus addresses, we're going to go back to the Information button, choose Advanced Settings, scroll down to System Configuration, press OK, System ID and Access, is highlighted, press OK. And what we want to do is go down and confirm that on the lead boiler, your MB1 address is 1 and your MB2 address is 1. Once you've confirmed that, the master boiler is set up. So now we've actually pro we've programmed the master control, and what we want to do is go in and program the lag boilers. Okay? To do that, we're going to go in and change the Modbus addresses for each slave control. Uh, or otherwise known as lag boiler. We'll start from the home screen. We'll press the information button, choose the advanced settings. We're going to go down and choose system, system configuration, which is highlighted for us right now. Click OK. System ID and access. Press OK. 
we need to go down and change the Modbus addresses for each one. So the MB1 address, okay, highlight it, click OK, and now we want to choose 2 for boiler 2. If we have, we were working on boiler 3, we would choose 3 or 4, etc. All right, but in this example, I'm going to say this is the slave boiler, and we're going to choose boiler 2, click OK, and you'll see your MB1 address change to 2. You'll also see now the Modbus address at the bottom has changed to 2. However, we still have the MB2 address that we'll need to change also. So we now go down and highlight MB2 Modbus address, press OK, use our up arrow, choose 2, press OK again, and now that will change. Now that we've changed our Modbus addresses, what we want to do is go back to the Information button, highlight Advanced Settings, Go to Lead Lag Configure, highlight it, press OK, and we're going to choose Lead Lag Master Configure. And on the slave boilers or the lag boilers, we need to disable the master function. Okay, So we're going to make sure it's highlighted, press OK, choose Disable, press OK again. Now it will change. All right. So now the master is disabled on the lag boilers or otherwise known as the slave controls. We're then going to hit the back button, scroll down to lead lag slave configure, okay? And we need to confirm that this is enabled via Solar Master. So if it was disabled, so on the main screen, if it was disabled, we want to highlight it, go down, choose enable via Solar Master, press OK, and now it will change. Back to the home screen. So now what we've done is we've uh, changed, we've programmed the master control and the slave controls. And we would do that for each slave control. So if there's up to eight boilers in the daisy chain uh, or in the cascaded systems, boiler two through eight will now change. Okay, so now that we've set up our master controls and our slave controls to cascade, what you may want to do is on the home screen, uh, change the prompts for your lead lag set point and operating temperature. So to do that, we look at the home screen, and you can change the top five line items. So what we have defaulted from the factory is system set point, operating temp, outlet temp, inlet temp, and the outdoor temperature. If you do not have an outdoor sensor hooked up, this will read open. In this boiler right here, we do have a sensor hooked up. So again, what you may want to do now that we've cascaded a boiler, we're using a system sensor, hit the eye icon, go down, scroll down, and choose display setup. Press OK, and the very first thing that's highlighted is the LCD contrast. So this is the contrast of the main screen. So depending on the lighting in that particular mechanical room, you can highlight this, press OK, use your left or right arrows to lighten or darken the screen. Once you're Chosen how dark you want the screen, press OK, and it'll go back to the display setup screen again. So now you have line item 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So you can customize this screen. So for example, I want to go down and choose line item 1. Highlight it, press OK. And these are all the options now we have to put on the main screen. So where we're using a lead lag sensor, we want to scroll down to your lead lag set point. So we're going to go down. Choose lead lag set point, highlight it, click OK, and now that will appear on the main screen. The next one down, we're going to go down to line item 2. Highlight line item 2, press OK, and what we can do is go down and choose the lead lag operating temperature. So if you're using an outdoor reset function, okay, that will tell you what your operating temperature is and your system set point. Once you've chosen that and highlighted it, clicked OK, now you can go back to your home screen, and the very up the top here, we now see lead lag system set point and lead lag operating temperature. So you can go ahead and customize those screens as needed. Okay. And lastly, what we want to do is do the combustion setup, which we talked about on the earlier screen. And again, I'm just going to show you how to get into that. That is press the eye icon, highlight test, press test, choose force rate, press OK. It's already highlighted for a high fire. Again, the burner must be running for this to, to take place. You would press OK. 
scroll down to start test, press start test, and now here's our test timer that we had talked about before. It's counting backwards now from five minutes. So we now have four minutes and 51 seconds left to do our combustion test, adjust our high fire. When we're done with that, use the up arrow to highlight, set low fire, press OK. All right, and now we'll go in and adjust our low fire setting. For anybody interested in uh, training classes on the Neotherm, which we get into, we do have a live fired station here at the facility. We can hold up to 70 people in our training room. Uh, please go to Lars.com and look at our online sign-up sheets for our training classes. Thank you very much.